Chapter 15 At sunset, with the air heavy and hot, Timothy described the sky to me. He said it was flaming red and that there were thin veils of high clouds. It was still, so still over our cave that we could hear nothing but the rustling of the lizards. Just before dark, Timothy said, Don't be long now, Philippe. We felt a light breeze and began to ripple the smooth sea. Timothy said he saw an arc of the very black clouds to the west. Then he looked. They looked as though they were beginning to join the higher clouds. I gathered Stucat close to me as he waited, <clears throat> feeling the warm breeze between my face now and then. There were gusts of wind that rattled the palm fronds, shaking the little hut. It was well after dark when the first drops of rain spattered the hut, and with them the wind turned cool. When it gusted, the wind hit the hut like a handful of gravel. <clears throat> then the wind began to blow steadily, and Timothy went out of the hut to look up at the sky, and he shouted, oh, "Day be boiling over now, Philippe! Tis a hurricane, do be true! <clears throat> we could hear the surf beginning to crash and the wind and the waves before it. And Timothy ducked down inside the stand of the opening of the hut. His big body stretched out so he could hang on to an overhead frame, keeping the hut exact as, exact as long as he could. I felt a movement around my legs and my feet. Things were slithering, and I screamed to Timothy, who shouted me back, back, Be nothing but the lizard, Philippe. They're going to high ground now. Rain was now splashing in the hut, and the wind was reaching a high, steady howl. The crash of the surf sounded closer. I wondered if it was already beginning to push forward up our hill. The rain was icy, and I was wet, head to foot. I was shivering but more from the thought of the sea rolling over us than from the cold rain. In a moment, there was a splintering sound, and Timothy dropped down beside me, covering my body with his. Our hut had been blown away. He shouted, Philippe, put your head down! And I rolled over on my stomach and put my cheek against the wet sand and stew cat burrowed between us. <clears throat> there was no sound now except the roar of the storm, even the sound of the wind that had been beaten it down, the wilderness of the sea, or the wildness of the sea, and the rain hitting my back, and thousands of hard berries blowing at me from guns. Once something solid hit us and rolled away, Sea grape! Timothy yelled. It was being torn up by its roots. We stayed flat on the ground for almost two hours, taking the storm's punishment barely able to breathe in the driving rain. Then Timothy shouted hoarsely, To the palm! So the sea was beginning to reach for us. Phillips climbing the 40 feet high with raging white caps. Timothy dragged us towards the palm, and I held on to Stucat against my chest. Standing with his back to the storm, Timothy put his arms around through the rope loop of the rope, and the rope around himself and also behind me to the tree. Soon I felt water around my ankles. Then I washed up to my knees. It would go back and then crash against the beach. Timothy was taking the full blows of the storm, sheltering me with his body. When the water receded, it would, he would hug, it would hug us and Timothy's strength would fight against us. I could feel the steel of his arms and the water tried to suck us away into the ocean. <clears throat> Even in front of him, crushed against the trunk of the palm, I could feel the rain, which was now jabbing into me like punches from a nail. It was not falling towards the earth, but it was being driven straight ahead by the wind. We must have been against that palm for almost an hour, and suddenly the wind died down and the rain became gentle, and Timothy said, Oh, the eye. We can rest a little bit longer till the, temp the other side of the tempest hit us. I remembered the hurricanes, which were great, great circling storms, and they had a calm eye center. He replied hoarsely, I'd be dumb, but it's all right. <clears throat> I could hear him making small noises as if it hurt and it was painful to move. As we stood back from the palm tree, 
We sat down on the ground beside it, still being pelted with rain, to wait for the eye to pass. Water several inches deep swirled around us, but that was not tugging. It was not tugging at us. It was strange and eerie in the eye of the hurricane. I knew we were surrounded on all sides by violent winds, but our little Kay was calm and it was quiet. I reached for Timothy, and he was cradling his head in his hands, still making small noises like a hurt animal. In 20 or 30 minutes, the wing picked up sharply, and Timothy said we must stand against the palm again. Within t- seconds, the full fury of the storm hit it once again. Timothy pressed tightly against me through the, the bark. It was even worse this time, but I did not remember anything that happened. We had been there a while when the wave must have completely reached to the top of the K. The water went away over my head, way over my head, and I choked and I struggled. Then another giant wave struck us and I lost consciousness, consciousness and so did Timothy. When we came to, the wind had died down, coming at us only in gusts. The water was still washing around the ankles, but it seemed to be going back to the sea. Timothy was still behind me, but he felt cold, and he felt limp. He was sagging his head down on my shoulders. Timothy, wake up! He didn't answer. Using my shoulders, I tried to shake shake him, but his massive body did not move. So I stood very still to see if he was breathing. I could feel his stomach moving a little bit, and I reached over my shoulder to his mouth. <clears throat> there was some air coming out, so I knew he wasn't dead. However, Stu Cat was long gone. <clears throat> I worked for a few minutes to release my arms from the lo- the loops of the rope around the tree- palm trunk. And when I did that, Timothy's body <clears throat> limped lifelessly against the palm. I felt along the ropes and around the forearms of the trunk until I found his the knots. With great weight against him, it was really hard to pull them loose. Even though they were the sailor's knots and the lo- had loops in them, the ropes were soaked, which made it worse. I must have worked for a half an hour before I could get him free of the trunk. He fell backwards into the sand and lay there, moaning. I knew there was very little I could do for him, except in the light, of, in the light rain, holding his hand. In my world of darkness, I learned that holding somebody's hand could be like medicine after a long while he seemed to recover his faint words painful and dragged out were philippe are you all right philippe to be true i'm okay timothy i said he said weakly terrible tempest he must have rolled over on his stomach in the sand because his hand left mine abruptly then he went to sleep i guess i touched his back and it felt warm and it was sticky and I ran my hands down, suddenly realizing that I, too, was completely naked. The wind and sea had torn our clothes right from us. Timothy had been cut by ribbons by the wind that drove this rain and the tiny grains of sand before it. It filleted his back and his legs, and there was very few pieces that weren't cut. He was bleeding. He was bleeding all over. But there was nothing I could do to stop it. So I found his hand again wrapped mine around it, and lay down beside him. I went to sleep, too. Sometime long after dawn, I awakened. The rain had stopped. The wind had died down to his usual whisper, but I think it was the clouds were still hovering over the sky because I couldn't feel the sun. I said, Timothy, but he didn't answer me. His hand was very cold and very stiff in mine. Old Timothy of Charlotte of Amelie was dead. I stayed there beside him for a long time. I was very tired, thinking that he should have taken me with him wherever he had gone. I did not cry then. There are times when you are beyond tears. But I went back to sleep, and this time when I woke up, I heard a meow, and I cried for the longest time, holding Stu Cat very tight. Beside him, I was blind and alone on a forgotten cave.